Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa Bubari, and this is the Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Welcome to this hour of uh, healing within and uh, a time for inspiration, information, and uh, about affirmations that help us move forward in life. You know, they say uh, what you think is the words you think, the words you speak and what you think is how your day begins. So as we are, have come together, I thank you for being here. And uh, it's so good to be here with you. For those of you who do not know me, by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and a stress management consultant. I have a healing center in the name of, by the name of Heal Within, where transformation for a better you begins. Today is March 13. And, oh my God, where has the year? It's already mid-March. We're marching forward. The beautiful rain has already cleared. The sky is clear. The sun is up in here. And, uh, you know, this is, this is life. One moment, rain at one place and sunny and bright somewhere else. Last night, late at night. Hi, Becky. Very late at night when I walk my dog just around uh, the block, I was about to do a uh, Instagram, but then my phone died, uh, the, the battery died. But as I was walking, I could hear different sounds. It had already rained. So the streets were this smell of after rain, the freshness from the grass. And I could hear my steps and my dog next to me. And as I was passing certain buildings, there were different sounds. I could hear a sound of moaning in one building, um, maybe the window was open this much. And yes, when we think about moaning, we think about pain, but there is also moaning for passion. And it's interesting, one, we cringe, one, we go, wow. And it's beautiful to hear and become present to acknowledge different things that happen that around that surround us in life, either daytime or nighttime. It's coming to that quietness that we can become so aware of everything else that is happening around us. Have you felt that? Do you take time for yourself that, or, or I should say, when do you do this? When do you take time for you just to linger and do nothing? And just allow thoughts to come and go and be mindful and allow yourself just to enjoy and experience and be present. So as I was walking the street and I heard the moaning of passion and brought a smile to my face. And as we passed a few doors down, I could hear the cry of a child like a baby. And that was interesting. So, you know, as children, we are so focused on what we feel, how it feels inside that when we have a pain, we cry. 
that when something hurts, we cry or we go and talk about it or we ask for help. And yet when we grow up as an adult, it becomes harder for us to express our feelings. It becomes harder to cry or a lot of people think that if I cried, it shows a sign of weakness. And brings me to one of my emails I just received right here. And the email says, it was such a pleasure, Lisa, speaking to you earlier this week. I would love to be, uh, I would love to make an appointment to come because I have had many, what does it say? I have had many therapists and many diets that I have done, and yet I still struggle with my weight. I cry when I am overweight because I detest my body, and yet I know I'm supposed to love my body. How can you help me love myself? A part of what I do as a hypnotherapist is to help my clients appreciate themselves and see themselves as a whole first. Any time that we want to shift or edit or change a habit or a behavior, I believe we have to tap into first understand what the behavior or that habit is doing for us, and then how we either like it or don't, and why we don't like it or love it. And then we can change that behavior. So you know how I started about walking in the streets last night and becoming aware of this sound and that sound? That's what hypnosis is all about. Hypnosis, as a hypnotherapist, I, yes, hypnotize my clients. I guide them into hypnosis. For I have absolutely no power or exude any power over my client. So as my client sits there, and in the beginning we have a dialogue sitting on my recliner, we talk about... What is it that they want to change the habit or behavior? And then as I write about, I am ready to take them into that state of hypnosis. I ask them if they are ready to go into that place of relaxation because hypnosis is a very deep state of relaxation. It's a zone state, it's a focused state, so focused that I can say, when I walk late at night, I go into my zone. It's as if mindful of everything else and yet very much aware of sounds. Even the sound of my step, footsteps, or my dog walking. That kind of an awareness is how we feel when we are in hypnosis. Because when we are in that state, although we are in a state of relaxation, we are more aware of our own heartbeat, our pulsation, a tingling sensation that begins to spread all over our body. And then we allow ourselves to go and relax deeper and deeper to a state right before sleep. See, being hypnotized is not being in that state of sleep. Because if you were asleep, then we cannot have a dialogue. Why am I saying that? Because during hypnosis, we have a dialogue. That's how we do the therapy part. So again, that beautiful sense of relaxation, going into your zone state, listening to the sound of my voice, guiding you into a deeper relaxation, and yet becoming more aware 
that's when I begin to ask questions, tapping into your subconscious mind for you to, let's say I'm going to answer this. Question is, what part of your body have you not made friends with? What part of your body do you not like? And if her answer was, let's say, my thigh, put your hand on your thigh. I would ask her to place her hand on her thighs. And even though she's got her eyes closed and she can open her eyes at any time, you see, a part of hypnosis is, although you are in hypnosis at all times, you can open your eyes, you can come to full awakeness because at the same time you're re responding to me. You're have, we're having a dialogue. So she can hear me asking her to put her hands on her thigh. And my question would be, what part of your thigh do you not like? Is it the upper part? Is it the mid part? Is it the outer part? And then why is it that you don't like? How is your thigh not good for you? Or let's have a dialogue with your thigh. If we could have a dialogue with your thigh, what would you say to your thigh? Is there a blame because your thighs are big? Would your thighs blame you? You know, sometimes it is having this dialogue with the inner part of us, the part that does not like us, so that we can ask, what is my block? Why am I criticizing myself? So it's the critical aspect of us, the part of us that is dissing us, the part of us that does not think Whatever it is, her body, even though she wants to change, that's how not, that's not how she was. So by getting where she is and not liking herself, it's not so much about the body, but it's the self itself. The body is just housing us, shielding us, protecting us. So it, the body did not eat, we ate. The body does not sit on the couch, we do. So if there is a part of us that is depressed, does not want to do anything, that's the part we heal first. To appreciate, to accept, to love, to acknowledge who we are. And then we can modify and let go of the things we do not want. So if there is a person who has this yo-yo diet, I like to ask, let me give you an example. Just a few days ago, I was talking to someone and I said, oh, I've got four weeks to drop four pounds. I have two weeks to drop four pounds. And he looked at me and said, why? And I said, why not? Because I can, because I want to, and because I want to fit in a dress for my event. And I want to do everything so I am comfortable in that dress. I have the specific dress in mind and I want to do it. So. Do you believe, do you think it can happen? Yes, it can. Not because I'm going to diet, not because I'm going to over exercise or anything is first. I have an image. I have a dress. That's the image that I want to fit in. Number one. Number two, I've already been in that dress. So my body already knows how to get in there. Three, I am moving forward towards what I want instead of saying I want to lose weight because I don't look good instead of the negative spiral. So when we go towards something that we want 
to create in our life, something that makes us feel good in life, something that we are moving forward and all the thoughts and ideas and concepts is achieving either the dream, the desire, the want, and we immerse ourselves in it, guess what? Thoughts become reality. Um, and that's why it will happen. And once I make that decision, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to fret about it. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, I was close to it, and it will happen. And there is nothing that is going to stop that energy and the thought process. So with this client that wants to feel good about herself, first we must find the times that she felt good about herself, that she felt good about her body. And it doesn't matter if it was college time, high school time, when she was 25 years old, if she is married or not, I have no idea. Before marriage, there was a time. We find that time that she felt good about herself, that she felt good about her body, and we begin there. How did she feel? And then we start moving forward to what shifted. How did her patterns shift? And the reasons that she has stuffed either emotionally, physically, mentally, a lot of weight. And she feels overweight. She feels negative about her body image. And to a point that because she feels bad about her body, now she doesn't like herself. And that's two different things. Liking or loving who we are is not the same as our body. I like to bring this example to so many. Of course, I do not know her personally. But if I were to ask Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah, do you like yourself? I bet you anything she's not going to say, well, my thighs are big. She's going to say, what is there not to like about myself? And here's another example I like to bring. There is so much pressure and expectation that we put upon ourselves to look in a different way, to be in a different way because of how it looks and how it comes across. And I like to say, when do you do things for yourself? The little thoughts, the negative thoughts that come upon, how do we shift the thoughts? And the thoughts that create the feeling is what creates the synergy to become better or go down into that spiral. Hmm. For my event, and this is gonna be a bit controversial, because I, I talk about, uh, I want to listen to you, my laptop acts up, I need a new laptop, I battle this every day. Thank you, Robert. I was giving the example just a few days ago. Someone asked me about a women's empowerment. And in my on my radio uh, talk on Sunday night, I was talking to my producer, and we're having a, we're having a dialogue. And he brought up "I Love Lucy," that his daughter enjoyed watching "I Love Lucy." And she, being six years old, she said, why is she saying, sir, to Darren, her husband? Uh, I mean, not Darren, Ricky. Too many different shows. And 
even though it was as a negative, as a derogatory, and yet at that era, it was yes, master, genie, yes, master, even though she was in control. And we can even go further back to another show, much older than that, The Honeymooners, where even though he loved his wife, he was the head of the household. So when we look at media, of how media portrays either family, father knows best, and then the Brady Bunch, and then the David Cassidy show that happened, and then all the way to uh, coming to Raymond, like, who loves Raymond, and then the character of the male being degraded, and the female being stronger. And now today, everything with the movement happening, I want to say how much the media has control over what we perceive a family ought to be, what we perceive our body image ought to be, how we are supposed to look like, what to dress, how to behave. So all this media, our children, our youth, even adults that follow, I want you to set your own trend. I have a friend of mine, I love Yvette. She sets her own trend. I have my own trend. We all have our own, but when we give in, and I'm not saying not everybody has it, but when we give in, and we get brainwashed by certain shows and we think that is the reality of uh, how our family is supposed to be, how a man is supposed to act or a woman is supposed to be, then that's where conflict starts. I think that's where our communication at home breaks down because children go to school and they have different expectations. And then they come home and because of what they have seen on Facebook, Snapchat or whatever, they come home expecting the same thing. Either my friend's daughter coming and saying, why are we not vegan? We're supposed to be vegan. And her mom saying, why do we have to be vegan? I don't know, but we are supposed to be vegan because that's the way we're supposed to be. If we come to a point of understanding being vegan, it's not about your body image. And that's what she wanted to be a vegan so she does not gain weight. Her family does not have any issues with weight. They are fully exercising every weekend. They go on their walks and their hikes. They are on the tennis court. The kids are playing everything. So someone at school had told her, if you don't become a vegan, you're going to get fat. So she comes home asking her mother to be vegan. Again, I know there is so much pressure and expectation for our children and us. And yet there is so much that is created as fear-based in some people. That if I am four pounds, 10 pounds overweight, then I am ugly. We are not ugly. Our body needs to be toned. Maybe we need to drop weight instead of losing. That feels bad. We want to drop the weight. We want to shed some weight. But who we are is not bad. Who we are is not fat. And it's those words that we speak and the first person who hears it is us. And the children and the kids who go to school without understanding, they come home 
And I love the ones who come home and educate the parents also. If we do this, it becomes healthier. But nowadays, everything is right here on the internet. So uh, appreciate yourself. And this client of mine, she is coming in this week. And the first thing we're going to work on is self-esteem. Appreciate and accept who you are so that as you become stronger, we can deal with the weight issue. Because for whatever reason, you allowed yourself to let go and come from whatever size to whatever size. If you are depressed, let's talk about that. That's the part that you have to feel good about yourself. If you need confidence, then I am here to work with you. One of my clients years ago, she enjoyed being overweight. And when she came in, she came in for an anxiety attack. Uh, head of, uh, uh, manager of a hedge fund in a bank. She didn't come for weight. She came for stress and anxiety. And when I, in my uh, intake form, she didn't even mark the weight aspect of it. You know why? Because the weight was not an issue. She enjoyed being overweight because she thought in her mind, and everyone has their own, that her weight is giving her a sense of strength and opulence and status. You know, we all have our own reasons for appreciating who we are. And for that, she was very comfortable with herself. And that's called beautiful. When you are comfortable in your skin, when you go into that place within yourself and you say, I am listening to my heart. I am loving. As I listen to my body, I like myself. I like my body. I can make changes for the better, but not because I am not good. I hate my body. Hate is a negative connotation. And as long as we hate doing something or we hate something, believe it or not, they say stop hating because you are in that place. Uh, the negativity, we have to I'm trying to say something as an example. No matter what experience we go through in life, we always remember the good instead of the pain. We always remember the good results, the happier ones. And those are the ones that we want to bank. Everything in life, the experiences of listening to the sounds of moaning with pleasure from one neighbor and a little baby crying, we're both experiencing. But if I were to walk the streets, guess what's going to stick in my mind? It's always the pleasure and the passions. It's always the good. We always remember our wedding picture. We look at that. And or a birth of a child, or graduating. The successes in our life are more powerful and stronger, and that's what we bank on. We always go back to the memories that was loving and joyful and happy and laughter. Because if you are loving and laughing, pain, and hurt and misery 
have no room in your life. So if you are overweight, love yourself. Because once you love yourself, that's when you can make that change and go in there. The more you appreciate what you want in your life is what we bring in. That's called transformation. We all transition, right? Transition from um, childhood to adulthood, from adulthood to married life, or from transitioning from school to work. We transition from one place to another. I just love the word transition. And so if we can't think of the transformation, not everybody is ready to transform. How about if you change it and say, I'm ready to transition from here to there. And that place is better, feels better, is uh, more loving, it's happier, and that's where I want to be. Because what we want in life is to be happy. If we understand what happy is, it starts from here. Being grateful. If we are grateful, if we feel blessed, if we are smiling and whistling, that's what life is about. So years ago, our master hypnotist, Gil Boyne, he would always say, when someone asks you, how are you? You say, thank you. I am wonderful. How are you? And mean it. And they will wonder, why are you wonderful? Because that in itself is a wonderment. It creates this wonderment of saying, yeah, how come? How's your day? Wonderful. Creating a dialogue with someone is the most beautiful thing. So, Mark, I am so glad you like yourself. I'm glad to join you, dear. Thank you for being here. Diane, yay, so glad I'm able to join you. Diane, <laughs> I'm so glad you are here. Actually, Mark, I just love you. I mean, is there a word? Oh, by the way, here's the thing I want to talk about. I have this person, other than you, Mark, that loves loves yourself and loves me, and you just love people. I see you promoting and emojiing not only me, but a lot of people. And I do follow you, and I do check on you too. So don't think I don't. We are in a place that this machine that is right here, Facebook, Snapchat, and everything, we are truly in the public. So someone sent me uh, a messenger saying, I love you. And my response was, thank you. That's it. I don't have to love that person back. I don't know that person. But if I can create a sense of joy or happy or something that triggers a good feeling in that person, then I've done my deed. Love, when I say I love you, is because we have so much love inside us or a plethora that we enjoy that person and we say, I love you. That means you are um, sparking this joy in me that ignites this loving feeling inside me that I convey that to you. Because from two continents, how can you love me if you don't know me? So love is an internal feeling. The same way as I like myself, I appreciate myself, and I love you. So if two people are facing one another and we say, I love you, it's because I truly feel loved. And that love that I have for you is what I am expressing. But if it is a loving relationship, we are to say, do you feel loved by me? 
And that's the most important thing. Do you feel loved by the person you love? Or is your love one-sided? No matter what the answer is, always have more love for yourself so that you can have overflow of it and share it with others. So tonight, as I will walk down, walk my dog, I will be more in tuned and listen. Listen to the sounds of birds, of the trees moving, even the sound of the rain, which is the most profound sound. Because when I close my eyes, and this is what I think when it's raining. As it rains, I think. Thank you for washing. Thank you for clearing. May you wash and clear all my pain, my sorrows, my hurt, and my worries away. And just allow myself as if imagine that rain to flow. It even clears all the dust and the crud from the flowers and the trees. It washes the streets. And it can also help us clarify, cleanse, calm, and be clear in all our wishes and desires in life. So thank you for tuning in. Hi, Alenus. Hi, Rubik John. Cord, I thank you for being here. Does anybody have a question for me? This lady has already signed up. She is eager to make the changes in her life. And I am so happy that I am honored to be the coach, to be the hypnotherapist, to help her transition from where she is to what she wants. And that's what's going to happen at my 3E. For the ladies who are going to be present, you are going to witness a transformation up on stage. And you're also going to experience transitions within yourself. That's why we call it life's journey from pain to power. The inner power within yourself. It's going to be amazing. You want to hear something funny? Here's something funny. So yesterday, I go to Castaways. And I am so excited. Um, and we walk through the entire thing. And this beauty, the mountains, the majestic mountains that we are going to be at, overlooking not only the mountains, the greenery, and the golf course in the background, and the trees, and this just, it, it was just exotically serene. How do you like that, exotically serene? And calm. And as we stood there, I took, I went live on Facebook, and I started videoing. We even talked. I showed the, the waterfall and the water fountain and the beautiful angelic shrubs all the way to where the event is going to be. <laughs> and I was so excited. We come back, and I come and sit in front of my uh, video to watch the video back. <laughs> my battery had died within not even a minute of the talk. And I'm going, okay. My excitement did not deplete because it was so real. It was so awesome that I started laughing and laughing and laughing. That, okay, you know what? It was not meant to be, but it was great when it happened. And if we can experience that kind of a joy, it will become so much easier to overcome pains and realize that all experiences 
I want you to bank the good ones and let go of the ones that does not enhance your life. And it's an old story. Let us stop repeating the old stories that are not helping us move forward in life. With that, I thank you for being here. And no matter if your battery is on or off, enjoy the experience and the sensation. Thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays. I hope this session was beneficial to you. And if it was, please share it. Or you can always call me. This is Lisa Mubari. Healwithin.com. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you for being here.